What's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Moral Combat Podcast. My name is Nathan. I am Zach. That's Nathaniel Blostone. Zachary Blostone. Because we are siblings. We are. We're brothers. We're also siblings. We're, we're brothers and siblings. We are related. We are. We were born from the same human. Humans. Humans. Is that how you pronounce that? Humans? Humans with human hands. Um, yeah, human hands. They didn't use the salad tongs on you. No, they did use the salad tongs on you. Well, I had a big head. They, they had were... to suck me out. <clears throat> yeah. For me, it was the vacuum. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They didn't use no vacuum on me. Our sister, though, I think was flipped upside down with a cord wrapped around her neck. We don't have to talk about that. Ah. Good um, times, good times. Yeah, here family, <laughs> family, family, family times, baby. Family birth trauma. <laughs> uh, here on Moral Combat, we uh, talk about uh, religious trauma specific to the Christian evangelical faith. Me and Zachary were both raised in the Christian church from birth, um, and both have walked away from the faith many, 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 many years ago. Zach, a lot more recent than me. Or, uh, yeah. I mean, not really that. I mean, when we say that, you're like, how well, recent? It's like seven, eight years because ago. Because we're getting older. I know. We're just getting older. Which, yeah, Zach turns 31 in like a week. So there you go. I'm 33. Mm-hmm. Um, the same age Jesus was crucified. If you uh, are watching this. If you this, must know. Yeah. And you believe in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And so sometimes we talk about the news, recent events, comedy, um, or we literally talk about uh, trauma and interesting things that we really believe we want to talk about with each other here publicly with you viewers. And um, it's quite fascinating what talking with your sibling about your own past religious familial trauma can do. Mm-hmm. It's quite healing the conversation. Zachary? Yes. How are you? I'm all right, man. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. That's good. Yeah. I'm doing so well that it's hard to put into words, but I'll do my best right now. Okay. Clap from the hair. Tongues. You brought tongues. I couldn't put it into words. That's how good I feel. Wow, that's amazing, dude. No, I'm fine. I'm even keel. I'm I'm at peace. Even a, even even keel. Even keel. I mean, I'm an, I'm at an even keel. Is that a word? Is that a thing saying? Yes, of course it's a saying. Even keel. You'll learn when you go back to school. Right. Oh, wait. Hmm. That's a good segue. Okay. Updates. Zach, do you have any updates for us before we get started into our topic for today? Uh, I have not. No, I'm chilling. Perfect. Um, I have a little update. I finished my first six-week acting course. Nice. At a San Francisco Acting Academy. Um, it was fantastic. I think I really have found... The next thing for Nene from the Bay that I'm going, that I've, I'm diving head into, like my head's going deep into it. And it's not necessarily water. It's like a cement water. Mm. You know, it's like you, you dive in and it's like, Hit! yeah. You know, you're like, oh, it's more like legs a- are like flailing. And you're <laughs> like, help. That's what it feels like. Yeah. But I'm diving in head nice. first. Nice. Um, and so I got one week off because I signed up for the next class because I loved it so much because it was so abusive. <laughs> creatively <laughs> abusive that, yeah you know it's like i failed so hard so many times i'm gonna keep failing love it learn how to fail harder and uh i'll take a week off and then i start off next week week after next week so mm. yeah how exciting man good for you thank you thank you very much um be doing hamlet again the first week which is hilarious yeah it is pretty funny speak the speech i pray you well you gotta go a little harder than that Speak the speech, I pray you, yeah. as I pronounced it to you, trippingly, on the tongue. On the tongue. Oh, but if you mouth it as many your players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air with your hand thus, but rather use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, how it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious periwig-pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings who for the most part know nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. <laughs> I would have a fellow whipped for overdoing termagant. It out Herod's Herod. Pray you avoid it. Cool. Good for you, man. Yeah, that's the Hamlet monologue. That's how well I know that one. Speech to the players. You're welcome. 
the the tough thing about old play dialogue like that is it's spoken in such a a different type of english it's spoken yeah well it's just like i can't really know what you're saying yes and like so i watched hamlet a while ago and it was i'm so sorry i'm forgetting the director and who did it but he the director that wrote or did this version of it played hamlet and from the jump because shakespeare is awesome but yeah like when you're when you're in it you're like some people love Shakespeare. Some people hate it. For me, I'm like, wow, this is like, I'm really interested, but it's so hard to follow and understand. And then by 20 minutes in, I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. Because like, there's so many scenes where you're just like, oh, no, 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 And you're just like, <laughs> oh my God, I missed the play. Yeah. hundred percent. So acting in it's a lot different though. If you're yeah. the actor. Yeah. You're like, wow, this is. A lot. This is a lot, but I'm doing. I, I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm the one doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. I up here. Thus I. Thus I. Thus me. So I am awake. I am alert. And I'm yeah. speaking. Yeah. And everyone else in the crowd is. They're all. Yeah. There's so many 90 year olds <laughs> just like holding their like booklet from where they got it like to their seats. <laughs> just completely out. Yeah. You're like, that's Shakespeare, baby. Yeah, that's Shakespeare. Those are, those are the groundlings. The groundlings in the past would be like, those are the people that stood at the front of the stage and they're like too poor to have seats and they would just yell at the actors while they're acting. Like, boo, shut up! Like, at wow. the foot of the stage? That's like the groundlings. That's the, that's the line I'm saying. Gotcha. Like, to split the ears of the groundlings who for the most part know nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. Yeah. Meaning that like, they're always yelling at the actors and, you know, like telling them to do things. They don't know what's mm. best, you know? And what a crazy time to think about that. Like being an actor in the totally. play and there's like hundreds of people on the ground, like yelling at you while you're like reciting some monologue. And then, yeah. Interesting. Fun mm. times. Fun times. Feudism. Good time. Yeah. Feudism. Good time. <laughs> Feudism. <laughs> Good time. Good times. Long hundreds and hundreds of years. Good times. <laughs> lots of infection. Lots of power. Lots of imbalance. Indeed. No checks and balances back then. But there are balances and checks. Zachary, any updates before we jump into our topic? Come on. Um, I had a meeting with a counselor. What type of counselor? I had a meeting with a academic counselor. Oh. And about uh, continuing my education. <sighs> I was, before the pandemic, I was in school to be a nurse. You know this. And the pandemic put that on pause for... Uh, a long time and uh, such a long time that I didn't, I lost my motivation to be a nurse. And so I didn't want to go back to school and I'd just been working as a bartender and it has not been working out. If you've been following this podcast, it has not been working out. And so um, I, ever since I got on disability and my life's kind of been shooken up, I thought like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to, you know, be stuck in this, this job life anymore where you're barely making your rent and when you get hurt it's like well we don't know you might get kicked out mm. you might lose your house it's like yeah. okay i'd rather have a job where um i'm sufficiently paid and i'm just a little easier living and so i've always wanted to be a psychiatrist and so i kind of talked to um a counselor about what that would look like and uh, it happened to be that the college I would apply to extended their applications one week, which happened to put it at today, the tenth, the tenth that we're recording it. Oh, and today, so yeah, yeah. This meeting was two days ago, and so she told me she's like, if you if you want to be a psychiatrist, you have to get your bachelor's in something, and so that's just your next thing. And it doesn't want to be nur- I don't want to be a nurse, so it can't be nursing. Uh, but I have done all the prereqs to transfer, and so um, she was like, these are your options. You can choose one and just get your bachelor's in it, and then you use that to go to med school. And so I quickly was like. I'm going to do this. And I applied and I applied for a bachelor's in biochemistry. Whoa. Yeah. Going big, go home. Go a little red there. Whoa, 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 whoa. A yeah. bachelor's in biochem. <laughs> That's some nerd shit. That's some nerd, nerd. And I, I was thinking about it because congratulations. Thank you. Um, What a big, uh, this podcast is beautiful. You For us, for me, and like, I don't even know if you're watching this and you're like, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, it's probably not. But for us to be able to have your, all of our stories, like it shows our process of dealing with our trauma and we're talking about it and it's public and we're editing it and we're going through 
tough times like everyone does and then Zach's on disability and then you see the process of growth. Yeah. And that decision making and then being like, let's just go for it. Yeah. And I, I, have got a, I haven't got it accepted yet, but I've got my application out and it's the first time I've applied to a UC. What are the chances you don't get accepted? Uh, pretty slim. The only thing that could be kind of iffy is if I just don't meet some of the requirements for biochemistry. But I don't think that's the case. I was basically going to go to the same school for nursing. It's crazy that like as I'm getting into m- less of an act, like more of a creative outlet as an a- acting, which is requiring a lot of like reading and writing mm-hmm. and studying and memorization and character analysis, script analysis, like really academic stuff, like reading and writing analysis. Uh, but as I'm getting into like something that's more creative and acting, you're getting into something more academic and Love it, dude. Totally. It's sick. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Um, you will get accepted. Say, we will, you will get accepted. I'm definitely going to get accepted. You will get accepted. Yeah. You will get accepted. You will be accepted. Shall we get, shall we jump into it? We got some stuff to talk about today. We do. Um, here we go. Mm-hmm. A moment to. Welcome to another rendition of A Moment to Reddit, uh, brought to you by The Moral Combat. My name is Nathan, and this is... My name is Zachary. On this edition of Moral Com- or of uh, Moment to Reddit, if you don't know what that is, it's when we go on to Reddit um, and just start searching of the most recent, over the last month, topics around uh, religious trauma, atheism. We just kind of do a deep dive on our own together or separately into seeing what's out there, what people are saying publicly. A lot of Reddit seems to be anonymous, so people are getting some things off their chest that are rather wild at times. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a significant amount of religious trauma in uh, the internets. And so there's always something to talk about on Reddit. Yeah. And we find posts, and you're going to see them pop up to the right of me and maybe to the left of Zach. And we're going to read them and talk about it. Indeed. Indeed. Um, and then we're going to read some comments that people made on their posts and we'll talk about those. We'll talk about those too. We got about four different posts. We do. Let's. Let's. Jump in. Let's jump right on in, baby. Our first post comes from the thread Atheism, which is a freaking phenomenal thread. There's just, people are nuts on there. I love it. Mm -hmm. User Solo13508 says, why are so many Christians offended by the most basic science? Mm. Interesting question. It is. Um, they say when it comes to things like the big bang, I get it. Events like that don't, or events like that directly interfere with what Christians believe in, but even basic science will get them so mad. Sometimes I grew up in what one would consider the Bible belt of America. And in almost all of my science classes, one of my classmates would get offended by something over Christianity, like we're talking weather patterns or animal behaviors, basic stuff like that. It got so bad that in my AP bio class, the teacher had to give a disclaimer that basically went like, you don't have to believe in what I'm teaching. Just write down the stuff I tell you to write down and you'll do fine. It's so ridiculous to me. How can you get so tied up in religion that even the most basic facts are so offensive to you? Well said. Thank you, Mr. Solo, or Mrs. Solo, or M- Solo in general. Yeah, are they? Are they? Well done. Thank you. Here in Mortal Kombat, we are always correcting our pronouns. In depth, we try our best. Um, why are Christians always offended of the most basic science? Which is a generalization, right? We're generally, I don't think all Christians, not all Christians, there's so many Christians I know that actually are pretty damn smart. It's yeah. just true. Yeah. But they're still uh, born again Christians. And why, I mean, we, we know that this is true in our own family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Some pretty basic science, stuff. science and Christianity don't mesh well. And so why? Because science doesn't try to prove there's a God and science doesn't believe the Bible is based off of logic. I think science is trying to prove there's a God, but that's a thing that it hasn't yet. Yeah. So it's like there isn't yeah. until proven otherwise. Yeah. So I think you're talking about logic. Yeah, there's logic in science yeah. and there's no logic in, in Christianity. It, it's faith. It's faith-based. faith-based. And so when you're like, oh, hey, well, schooling is going to be logical and you are a faith-based student, 
you're going to be very conflicted when the logic starts to hit your faith because you're it's all everything's logic over here and if there's not much logic over here these are going to clash yeah and it always is i mean in our upbringing the uh, evolution was like the the worst thing that could ever be taught to children um and we and, touched on that when we watched the jesus camp documentary yeah, yeah. right there yeah. was that whole scene about the mother that was talking about what you would do if it was to teaching evolution all of that it seems that like the most basic of science is it's detrimental to the christian faith right mm. like basic science doesn't it conflicts so di- in, like directly with the christian faith that's why it's so offensive that's mm-hmm. why it's so dangerous um all right so rob ackerson uh says because accepting some science gives validity to the science that disproves their insane worldview. I'm going to read that again. Because accepting some science gives validity to the science that disproves their insane worldview. That's very, very, that's exactly what I was just saying. Yeah. There's a little bit of science proves the difference between faith and logic, mm. really, right? It's like the whole faith is believing without seeing. So it's you're believing in something that you ultimately can't prove. And science is believing if you see it. But yeah, prove it however it prove looks. Prove it, yeah. Um Ogre MK5, great name, says, honestly, it's because they have no actual faith. This is an interesting comment. Mm-hmm. They know they are supposed to believe in the Bible stuff, but they never see the Bible stuff actually happen. They see cars and airplanes and satellite data every day. When they say Bible stuff, I'm assuming like miracles or Bible stuff. They, but they never see the Bible stuff actually happen. So yeah, like the miracles that happen in the Bible aren't actually happening in today's world. They see cars and airplanes and satellite data every day. They can't just accept that their most fundamental beliefs are in dispute, much less wrong. So they do the only thing that they can, which is attack science. And it looks batshit insane to us, but it makes perfect sense to them. Yeah. When was like, it's, when was the last time you experienced talking with a religious person about (laughs) some basic science stuff that, you know, we just talked about it on this podcast, (laughs) right? You just had a conversation with mom and dad. I have multiple conversations with Christians. We'll just leave it that way. Uh, that believe global warming is a hoax and they will say that sentence out loud and they've been saying that for 15 years it's all about money it's just a money game it's a hoax and it's just proven by science multiple times that it's not a hoax by any means and uh that's a very common conversation i have with the christians in my life yeah and it it, it's there's like a bleed too politically and into like this culture right it's like it bleeds into other things um, the movie uh, Don't Look Up does a great job at like demonstrating kind of that ignorance of Ad- Adam McKay yeah yeah it's a great film it's super good film yeah just how every, I mean we're all so easily manipulated I think like that's the the thing is like none of us get out none of us are can escape the possibility of being I don't want to say brainwashed but like convinced simply you know otherwise or how you know uh how to fall into religion or how to not fall like, but like how somebody with a rather sound mind and intelligence can become religious. Yeah. Um, having a science background that happens, you know, and it's like, how does that happen? It's because there's the whole entire religion is based on trying to get you to like, you have to deny science to be able to be a Christian and to reap the benefits of the Christian faith. You can't really, it's hard to like bleed over, which I guess there's more, Modern well, I mean, Christianity what is, now. You have to look at what is the Christianity, what does the church offer? And it offers community. And it offers community on a weekly basis. That's what it offers. And I think some people that are intellectuals that kind of fall victim to the church or fall victim to, I became a Christian and I don't even, how did I get here? I was a scientist and I didn't, I was an atheist most of my life and this isn't really that logical and I believe it. It's like, well, you were pulled into a church with people trying to express as much love as possible to you in community that are going to meet every Sunday and give you the same amount of community every Sunday that you can't get, you're not getting anywhere in your life. So if your family's not giving you this love, if your scientific community is not giving you this love, if just your friends aren't giving you this love, but you find it at a church, it'd be pretty easy to think that this Jesus thing must be real. Look at this love I'm getting in this community. Also fear. Yeah. Yeah. Community, friends, husband, wife, finding the love, 
all of that is you can find that at the church. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also so fear based. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I agree with uh, Solo thirteen five zero eight. Mm. It is. Uh, it's frustrating. It's. Um, uh, sometimes there's like a hard stop with people. That's like the hard line in our family. Is that's why we don't talk religion and politics, and we still talk science. But it's like so easy for certain conversations for me to feel like where to be able to accept family or like certain you know religious individuals in our family and to be at peace with this relationship and to grow the relationship conversations around science and politics and all of that are where it's like we draw the line it depends on what part of science we're talking about if we're talking about like a new scientific discovery not gonna be an issue if if we were talking about something with space and, and not gonna be an issue we're all gonna be interested in it if we talk about anything to do with the weather and why it's changing so drastically it's, there's probably going to be some sort of issue and we just don't talk about it. That's true. Simple science, right? Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move along. Moving right along here on a moment to Reddit. On the Moral, Moral Combat, Combat Podcast. Podcast with your host, Nathan and Zach Bloss. From the Religious Trauma Forum, our uh, thread on Reddit, which is another great thread if you really want to dive deep into some people's trauma (laughs) um user mountain chemist 910 says i was raised an atheist my partner just stopped smoking weed cold turkey and his religious trauma has come back in full force what can i say to help console hmm this one isn't close to home not at all i don't even know what they're talking Uh, about we have no idea uh, uh, we, I don't even want to apologize. Longer posts, but they're great posts. And these are real people. And if you ever see this and this is who you are, thank you so much for being vulnerable. Yeah. Hi, hoping to get some advice. I'm trying to figure out ways to tell my partner when he has a relim- uh, trauma flare up. My partner had gone in the bad habit of chain smoking weed for a couple of months to deal with his stress and recently decided to quit cold turkey to break the habit. It's been a rough two weeks and his anxiety has been bad and he's having very bad physical symptoms of withdrawal. Tell me about it. (laughs) With his anxiety and added anxiety from the bad physical symptoms, his strong religious trauma has reared its ugly head and he's constantly thinking about it, especially when he's having those physical reactions. For added context, we are a gay couple. He was raised Catholic. Enough said. I was very fortunate to have been raised atheist. Due to this, however, I have no idea what to say to him when he's having these thoughts uh, painful about religious mumbo jumbo. He's got lots of thoughts about if this is punishment for something he's done and existential stressors, etc. It's hard to see him so fucked up. I do not want, I, I do not know what the right things are to tell him in these moments. Deep. Uh, Mountain Chemist 910. So sorry. Um, I think like going through when 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 your partner is dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety, like and your friend, you're in a romantic relationship and you love them with all your heart, and you're feeling strong and happy in life, and they fall victim to I'll say victim fall into the depressive anxiety part of life, job loss, sickness, death in the families, loss of pets, you name it. Yeah. When your partner is dealing with severe depression and anxiety. You, as the other partner, start to, you suffer from that, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, that's part of the, that's it. Like, I'm here, faults and all, no matter whether, you know, like, all of that. And so, I feel for you because um, part of that, in my opinion, part of that love is learning how to be what your partner needs during these really hard times. Sometimes what your partner needs is to get serious help on their own, Mm -hmm. independently, um, whether there's religious trauma or not, quitting weed after chain smoking it, um, habitual use of marijuana, um, quitting it cold turkey causes freaking some of the worst withdrawals. Mm. And it's so like everything has withdrawals that you quit cold turkey, right? That's why you're supposed to like taper off these things. I feel like it's like a certain personality too that's just like, I'm I'm done. Yeah. That's how I am. So I get it. And it's always the same people that are like, I'm smoking every second of my life. Right. Those people are the ones that are like, I can quit cold turkey. Yeah. It's like, but you smoked more than yeah. most people in the room here. Yeah. 
Sounds like me. Yeah. And um, my advice uh, for the the partner that was raised atheist and wrote this mountain chemist nine ten, um, you, you can't say the right thing. Uh, religious trauma is different for everybody, and you, you, it's not. Oh, what do I say? It's not about saying anything. I think the biggest fear that people who struggle with religious trauma is one: they've done the wrong thing by leaving the faith because they were raised in it. And also that they've they've um, they're alone because they've left it, and especially I would assume a couple that is a gay couple breaking the biggest rule in the Bible, if anything, <laughs> um, you're going to have a lot of that guilt. And so, if I were on their side as the atheist, not knowing what to say, it's you just you let them know they are consistently loved and they have a place and a home, no matter what happens because i feel like the biggest fear i have when it comes to trauma is is that i'm alone now that i've i've given up my religion because i used to have a community of people that i could always go to for prayer i could always go to for whatever and no matter who i am as a person they're going to forgive me because i'm a christian mm. but now that i'm not i don't have that forgiveness anymore and i don't have that self love and totally and so that's like what role the athe- the atheist partner plays yeah. Uh, and like it's interesting too like hearing when when someone says i have no idea like i have like being raised atheist versus being raised evangelical christian or whatever like those are such stark striking contrast differences like mm-hmm. such completely opposite upbringings like how would that atheist partner know how to manage someone dealing with such severe religious trauma religious trauma comes out in almost all the forms of anxiety like it's if you suffer from religious trauma in my experience like that's what kind of seeps into like all throughout the cracks of your life. Mm. And why does marijuana help so well with something like religious traumas? Typically because your, your parents probably didn't love you unconditionally. Mm. And without that unconditional love and support, every area of your life is being judged or uh, gaslit, you know, or undermined. And so you develop this sort of belief system that there is no such thing as unconditional love or like coddling, if you will, like the the real love of a mother and father. That's like, we support you no matter what you believe or what you want to do. Um, except, you know, like addictions and all that, the basic stuff. So what happens is you smoke weed and that mother of Gaunja, that mother of Gaunja comes over and is like, hi baby. Mm. Did you want to watch a movie? Mm-hmm. Did you want to eat some food? Did mm-hmm. you want to take the dog for a walk? Did you want a garden? Because I'm here with you all day. How about a little massage? How about a little joke? How about a little time to hang? I'm here for you. Want some ice cream? Like that's Mother Ganja. And when you had a mother that was kind of like, or a father that's like, yeah, the way you're thinking right now. It's wrong. Is wrong. You should pray. Oh, that person you love, you can't love them because you're having it. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with because you. Because gay, being gay is a sin. So when you have like that, that love, that love as the, your most important yeah. love, it's like mother Gamja is a, that's like the mother, man. Yeah. That's like, and, it's the be- Ugh, I, and that's why I love marijuana. That's why I'm smoking cannabis again. <laughs> okay. Because it's a love hate relationship because we're tr- constantly wanting to like have more control when you realize it's not about having more control. It's about how can I, how can I figure this out? What's oh, really going on? I here? wish, I wish I could ask. Um, I mean, the smoking weed as much as it sounds like this person is or was smoking weed, chain smoking it. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't be smoking anything that much, I, w- I would say. Um, and if you're smoking weed throughout every second you think of your day, there's, there might be an issue there. There might be, but Maybe I mean, not. I mean, some people, I don't know. Some people thrive on weed 24-7 and it helps a lot there's of There's some cultures. Yeah. The thing is, is we all know that inhal- there are some truths here. Some truths here. Mm-hmm. Inhal- inhaling any type of smoke is probably not good for your health. Mm-hmm. Your body does a really good job at breaking down toxins, but smoking all day, every day, you might get cancer. Yeah. You might get COPD. Mm-hmm. You might get all those things. But uh, that's not even what I'm saying. I'm saying more of like the mental, the, men- no, right, that's the mental I'm, thing of being high all the time. If you have like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons like cultural or even religious or personal reasons. Like yeah. People can- I wish, I wish I could ask a uh, mountain chemist- who wrote this post on why they have to quit cold turkey? Why can't they? I, I think I get it. I mean, y- you get it uh, because there's there's black and white. There's nothing else in this world. The same way you were raised, right. with black and white. Black and white. Yeah. that's probably why. Yeah. The and the atheist is like, I don't know. 
I don't know what's up. They just like they're they they you know they eat like massive you know meals and then they won't eat for whatever and then they work out like crazy and then they you know they can't just get a simple workout and they always have to work out for an hour and twenty you know forty five minutes it's always like the, this or that this or mm-hmm. that this or that and because you're told in the Bible lukewarm life is bad you can't mm-hmm. be in between yeah don't be lukewarm like you're you're not allowed to be balanced yeah. And that's like the th- balance is the key. Yeah, balance is the key. And so to learn balance, sometimes you got to go through fire. Like, so turning something off so aggressively because you want to have control. You know, exp- like in the, even the way that they, I, I have nothing ill to say about anyone else's process or partnership, but my partner had gotten in the bad habit of chain smoking weed for a couple months to deal with his stress and recently decided to quit cold The bad habit. Already the person that's smoking weed every day probably already has from religious trauma has such severe guilt from what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like they don't need anybody to tell them. They yeah. have that there. Yeah. They know that they're smoke, they're using a substance so much it's drowning out the other part of everything else about life. But they can function and they can live in it. And it's great and it helps with anxiety and it's like a blanket of love. Mm. So why, why wouldn't I use it all the time? But they are thinking this is wrong because I'm using this all the time. Like, who am I if I'm just using this all the time? I'm well, nobody. That, that's also another part of the, the concept we don't really know. We, we don't, don't know, know. We don't know why they need but to But this quit. is just from personal experience that I think that, like, it, it, it's, there's so many layers to this. Mm-hmm. Why somebody would just cold trick or why they're using it all the time and it's helping them. It's like people use antidepressants every day because it helps them. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so I – if there was, like, a – if. If there was a way to take a marijuana pill in the morning that kept you like a nice low buzz Buzz, high all day, people take it every day. Yeah. (laughs) You know, because it wouldn't kill your lungs. It'd be totally healthy. And you'd just be like, we're good for for 12 hours. And yeah, I, uh, my encouragement Mm. to the atheist would be to, this is the encouragement I have for everybody is like, Let's focus on the truth. Like, let's focus on who we are. How do you, how do we figure out who we are? Therapy, uh, meditation, journaling, exercise, putting ourselves into tough positions, creative outlets, like adding to our life, not Mm -hmm. taking away. When we take weed away so aggressively, fears of loss. When we didn't have parents that loved us conditionally, fears of loss. Mm -hmm. So every time we take something out that's comforting, there's this unbelievable amount of loss. And it's like, I can't do this. Nobody understands me. I just lost everything. And it's like, no, no, no. You didn't lose everything, but I know you're feeling like you just lost everything. That's really, really difficult. Mm. And it sounds like when you're in such opposites, like me and my partner, even though she had a lot of, she has her own version of religious trauma, but completely different levels of like being raised in the Christian evangelical faith. We are very different on this. She doesn't have any severe religious like as bad as severe religious trauma and so because of that she's had to learn how mm-hmm. to like work with my issues right like how to balance them like and same goes for me with them and i think that like what works for us is we're both in therapy we have our own therapist we have a therapist in our relationship our couples therapy we're reading books in our relationship um but the most important thing is i have been in therapy for like years and i've done Massive amounts of, not massive, but I've done some really amazing soul searching plant medicine and um, know how difficult it is coming off marijuana after habitually using it for so long. Um, It is so hard. Mm. And that's just the period. Took me about seven days before I felt safe. Um, And then I started to deal after four months, no marijuana. And then I started to have such bad insomnia again, like so bad. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping like an hour a night that um, it was just time to bring the medicine back. And ever since I brought the medicine back, we're sleeping, baby. So it's a um, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. And quitting weed cold turkey when you're smoking this much is going to have issues. But two weeks after, if you're still not accepting this reality and you're having a tough time, like this person is, the issue is so much deeper than the weed. The weed is it is probably not yeah. the issue. And so, like you said, the the next step is definitely start seeing a therapist. And if you don't like your therapist the first time, if you don't vibe with them the first time, get a different therapist yeah. until you vibe with your therapist so that you can get some help. Because 
in reality, the fear and anxiety and panic and depression you're feeling is from something deeper. It's not because your life is terrible. Mm. And it's not because you did anything wrong or you're guilty, especially in this situation. It's not because you're guilty that you're feeling this way or you're being punished. It's because you had an upbringing that traumatized you and brainwashed you and your brain is not getting over it. And the only way to get over it is to attack that trauma. Yeah. So you got to attack that trauma through therapy. Yeah. And if not, maybe some pretty intense plant medicine therapy too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's like where we get into the gray area of where we're not doctors and yeah, maybe someday Zach will be. Going but, to school for um, We are big believers in uh, the psilocybin uh, plant medicine. We're big believers these, I mean, cannabis, ma- marijuana is a plant medicine that is just, uh, these are, these are like blessings. These are gifts. Um, there's, that, a, there's a place for each one. These are, how do you say in Spanish? Regalos, right? Regalos? Regalos oh. is gift. Is it regalos? I hope so. If it's not, then you'll know that my Duolingo is <laughs> not <rough>. doing well. <laughs> not doing well, but I am still on it. I'm still learning Spanish. Um, and so Every good thing can become a bad thing, but I don't want to say it's bad. It's more of like something that works can stop working and you have to acknowledge when it's not working anymore. It is so hard to stop something that, you know what I'm saying? But also having, having to be high 24 seven isn't working. In some, in some ways. Yes, absolutely. Like in the bigger picture, of course, but it is working. That's why they're doing it 24 seven. Because it's working. We don't, we also just don't know their situation. It, they it, might just be fully disassociating and just not even dealing with life. But I mean, like, but you see, you see my point is that it's like, it's any, like if you drink coffee back to back to back all day long, that would be so bad for you. Like anything that you use back to back to back that you yeah. can't let go of, you're chasing. Yeah. It's you're, chase. you're chasing. And if you chase anything, you'll burn out. Yeah. It's just like, you can't run forever on a treadmill. No. Nope. You know, if you're going full speed on a treadmill, why don't you walk? <laughs> no! Yeah. You're going to burn out, fall off the treadmill, hit the wall, twist your ankle, yeah. not be able to run again. Yeah. And that sounds like this, you know, we all got to go through. Sometimes you got to, you got to just like commit and you're like, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. <laughs> and you got to do that for a while. You just got to yeah. keep doing it. Then all of a sudden you're like, I got to figure my shit out. And yeah. so you figure it out. And so. Figure. Luck. Yeah. Good luck. We're here. Best um, of luck. If you would like to be interviewed and you see this podcast, give us a call. Yeah. Phone yeah. Number, we have our own cell phone, business cell phone, call it. And just know you're not alone. You're not and alone. You're suffering and you're loved by, yes. by more people than you believe. So loved. Okay. Next. Jumping right in. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. Here we go. Um, I'm just going to keep reading them, man. That works. Are you, are you on Smokestorm 3? I'm on, you've been on my heart lately. Smokestorm 3. Here we go. On the religious trauma thread, uh, Smokestorm 3 says, you've been on my heart lately. In quotes. Sounds like a song. (laughs) You've been on my heart lately. You've been on my heart lately. And nobody knows, but I've been waiting for you so maybe you can come down that road where everybody's watching you and you go in we can shine like san francisco through the road you've been on my heart lately smokestorm three this one fucking sentence ignites so much rage in me my coworker, who I hardly see or talk to because she's at a different location than me said this to me and followed it up with I've just been praying extra hard for you lately. And she says this every time I see her. I try to be polite, but my face isn't great at hiding my emotions. It just feels so ungenuine. Like you're not saying this because you mean it. I have to fight the urge to punch someone or be rude when they say this. I hate living in the Bible Belt. It's not just the Bible Belt. It's like, uh, uh, triggering. Oh, dude. What is that? Triggering. <laughs> if you have religious trauma, this is triggering. That, that sentence, you've been on my heart lately. I don't know. Like when, when I saw that, I was like, it wasn't just us. It wasn't just our oh, church. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. This is a culture. What's with that sentence, This is in the culture. This is a culture, baby. I can't tell you how many grown, old, old adults, youth pastors and people would, Zach, 
you've been on my heart lately. I've been praying a lot for you. I've been praying a lot. And I think there's something you want to confess to me. So what? It always was this weird situation. The full statement is, you've been on my heart lately. I've just been praying extra hard for you. Yeah. Why? uh, Why? Did I do something wrong? It's, it feels like it's the the other party is trying to take power as much as they possibly can. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna. Uh, Do you have comments where to go on over? No, I didn't. Have, I didn't even finish it. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. The finishing part goes. I was very fortunate to have been raised. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, I did no, finish it. Sorry. You did finish it. Yeah. I did finish it. That makes sense. Yeah, because I was the end. My bad, everybody. Um, let's get into these comments because uh, the comments are great. Um, abs absurdone absurdone says ha in quotes extra hard. As though they are pulling you through life on a sled, and the harder they work at it, the better your life becomes. And Smokestorm 3, the OP who posted this, says, Bro, exactly. <laughs> oh, bro, exactly. Bro, exactly. I fucking hate the Bible Belt, bro. <laughs> I hate it here. Can't wait to move. Yeah. Um... Yeah, extra hard. That's that's the idea. Is it's like it's like I am. Like, sw- I prayed harder today than yeah. I did yesterday. Yeah, for you. my blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. It was so hard for me to get down on my knees today to pray for you, yeah. Zach. Yeah, I'm just praying so hard, so hard, so extra hard, hard, harder. I'm praying harder. How hard were you praying for yeah, me? Show me, demonstrate. Popping blood vessels hard, baby. Ah! <laughs> there, their life there. will be better now. Their life for will it. be better. Oolated squigs, <laughs> oolated squigs, oolated squigs says, depending on what you are going through, you could say, I appreciate your prayers, but I could really use some help. Would you be willing to help me? Ooh. They probably won't. And their feelings of guilt for being unwilling to do anything of real value will prevent them from reaching out again. Or maybe they surprise you and show you that they can be a decent human. Either way, win, win. Love it. Such a well executed plan. <laughs> Love it. Also, have have a, a thing they can do to help you already in the back of your head. Yeah, like something you need. Like you need someone to help you move a couch. Yeah. No, I could use some help though tomorrow. I need to move a couch. C- could you help me? They'll stop praying for you pretty soon. You know what's funny is it's like I kind of want to make a short right now. It's kind of <laughs> like, were you raised in the Christian evangelical faith? Okay, do you have religious trauma? Severe religious trauma? Do you ever have anybody coming up to you telling you that? You've been on their heart lately and that they're praying very hard for you. Here's some advice. (laughs) Here's something that you could do to help get out of that situation. Depending on what you're going through, you could say, I appreciate your prayers, but I could really use some help. Would you be willing to help me? They probably won't. And their feelings of guilt for being unwilling to do anything of real value will prevent them from reaching out again. Or maybe they surprise you and show you that they can be a decent human. Either way... It's win, a win, win 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 we call that a ding ding dinger on this moral combat podcast because that's some here. great advice and i think i love what you just said it's kind of like oh thank you so much for praying for me honestly like i've been going through a lot do you think you could actually help me right now move my couch yeah um because you gotta have it be something that's like no, no one wants to help move a couch you, could you help me move today yeah i'm moving from um the east village all the way across town to take about an hour yeah i don't have a truck i have a honda do you have a truck? You, have you, a truck. I, you do have a truck because I see your I, truck out there. Yeah. All of you Christians have fucking trucks. Trucks. <laughs> and moving vans. So help me move. Please. Yeah. And if they do, you got some help. It's a great, it's just great advice. I love it. I never even thought of that. I always just get so triggered. I can't even respond, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think... Um, as a nurse working in the hospital, one of the things that I've had, sorry, I'm talking off mic a little bit there. Um, one of the things that's happened a lot to me is people from, cause I'm, we're doing this podcast out of the same town and or County we were raised in, which means our parents church and all their friends churches are in the same County, which means every once in a while we run into people of the past and it's like, just like that eyes wide. Ever since we started this podcast, it used to be like people would come up to us and they do this Oh my gosh, Nathan. Yeah. Or be in the hospital. A patient would come in and it's somebody from the past. Yeah. Oh, Nathan. Yeah. You're hurt. Um, just want to let you know that we've been praying for you praying for a long, for you. long time. on our hearts. That has been said to me so many times yeah. as a nurse yeah. while they're like in the bed. Yeah. You know, like having a heart attack. Like, oh, Ethan, we're praying for you. <laughs> yeah, and as I'm you're like, dying. Here's some heparin. <laughs> here's some blood thinners <laughs> to save your life. Stop praying for me. You're Just stop. Um, and so I totally understand when, like how triggering it is, man. It's just like, 
So, and then we ever since we started this podcast. Sorry, dude. <laughs> the next time that happens, just take the, the what, what, what was the chemical? Heparin. Heparin, just take the heparin, lit up, flick it, and just go, science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's like, here is something that's going to blow your mind. Science saving science. your life one push you, at a time. You don't even need faith. It's yeah. just going to work. Every CPR, science, 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 <laughs> science, 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 science. They didn't make it. They science make isn't it. real. Science is science not isn't real. real. It's a hoax. <laughs> Sorry. I did not mean it over you. I just could not resist. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. Um, I uh, kind of forget where I was going with that. Well, I mean, it just happens. It happens all it happens the time. All, happens all the, oh, yeah. And since we started this podcast, I ran into and we've gone to events at our parents' church for whatever family stuff. Um, and the same people that used to always tell me they're praying for me, they're not telling me they're that anymore. They're not praying for us <laughs> They're anymore. not praying for us. <laughs> it's so true. Which is kind of like a blessing, you know? It's like, no one's really asking us about like, are you coming back to the faith? It's like, you're think, not coming back. <laughs> I think they get it. I think they get it now. <laughs> these dudes are, these dudes are crazy. They started a podcast. Yeah. So either start a podcast about your religious trauma. Or come on. Or, or come, come on, come on to our, come podcast. On our podcast. Yeah. Or have something they can help you with because they might. Yeah. Back off at that point. Yeah. Start yeah. a podcast, go on a religious trauma podcast, or ask them for real help. Yeah. Click. Yeah. Um, let's wrap this up. We have our last little Reddit post here. Um, and then we'll go on over to the game cam. This comes from the atheism, a- atheist, atheism, athe- atheism. You got this. Thread. <laughs> a user, Talena. Hmm, that's, if that's a real name, it's kind of pretty. Tal- it's beautiful. Talena. Excuse me, Talana. Can you pass me the salt? I feel like she. Uh, I, Excuse me, Talana. I feel like they would be a really good uh, telemarketer because their name has Tela in it. Yep. Okay. Uh, they say, "What makes intelligent, educated adults start believing in the Bible?" Classic question. <laughs> and I kind of, if we kind of brought we kind of brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> We kind no, of con- continue. Yeah, yeah. Continue. We kind of brought it up at the beginning of this Reddit or yeah form. As I have several friends as well as my eldest brother who became Christian in their thirties. That'd be like well, that'd God be like damn, you dude. on the podcast next week being like, I have something I need to say. <laughs> I'm going to be leaving the podcast because I'm giving my life back to Christ. I'd be like, and there it is, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us for the last year, <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, as you're trying to cry, and that, I just, yeah, and, and that's a wrap. I will be quitting acting now. Um, <laughs> Nothing's and real. I'm not going to be working as a nurse anymore. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Thank you. If you if you needed to know, the Earth is flat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they showed no interest in religion before. They are all educated, intelligent people, but like all believers, are unable to provide any logical arguments that support their belief. It feels like a switch was thrown in their brain that now demands a belief in religion. I'm not aware of any trauma occurring in their lives at the time they begin to be religious. Is faith a form of compulsion? Or are they getting something else out of it? Probably both. There's just so much that's so much like that's such a big question. It's such a big statement. Can Christians, can evangelical Christians be? Because <laughs> <laughs> like the question is so ridiculous. Like, can evangelical Christians be intelligent? And that's such a like it's such a bad question. Because it's really it's, hard because they take logic out of everything. It's because like, can you be a Christian that's intelligent? Sure, but being an evangelical Christian. Does that put you into a different category? Uh, I do. Yeah, I, I don't know. Logic and Christianity are hard things to go. Yeah, exactly. Real and faith-based from Christianity. From what we know as humans, logic means intelligence, right? Sure. Th- at least the way we define it. So if Christians define it, logic means faith, then maybe they're, or no, uh, intelligence means faith. Logic is a form mm-hmm. of intelligence, part of it. As non-believers, we believe that. Right. What if they think logic is not intelligent and actually restraining from logic and just believing one book is the intelligence. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, it's like, so the question is, is can Christians be I have no logical? idea. <laughs> I have no idea what to say to this post. Well, a 30 year old addicted to Mosh 161 agnostic atheist says same stuff that brings them to drugs. Humans do a lot for the happy chemical in their brain. Mm. Boom. Boom. It's just like, 
Give that person an upvote. Give them yeah, an give upvote. Them an award. Give them an award. When you, and we've talked about this a lot in this cast, when you're, when you're standing in, an, in a room with a hundred other people, not even that many other people, and they're all raised hands, screaming the same song on key, you know, singing the same words. You can kind of feel, you start to feel that the energy of everybody singing the same thing and looking at you and, yeah. and holy, holy, yeah. holy yeah. Lord. And you're like, what is this? What am I feeling? It's like, you're, <laughs> It's you know it's, it's like that gold dust that yeah. warmth that that power this it's real um, Jesus it's, it's real and what I would at say that moment for what people. I would say is go to a concert with just go to like a two hundred person concert where everyone knows the singer yeah, go to Taylor Swift two hundred people <laughs> sing the song with everyone and see how powerful it feels yeah it's not Jesus yeah I think I think using Taylor Swift or Beyonce is a good example yeah you walk into there that's a religious concert yeah that is the religion of Taylor Swift yeah that is the floor is almost caving in and it's just like and like those people are like the whole point of taylor she's coming out with a movie and they're going to be in the theater screaming every song and theaters are begging fans to not scream in theaters it's like this is like crazy religious people that are like our lord and savior taylor swift and they know all the lyrics totally good example to yeah. like the warm fuzzy feeling that you can also get at your local church at your local church you is just got to have faith. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. But is it a slippery slope into the dogma? Yes. 100%. And what does the dogma offer? Community. They are. I mean, uh, and, and decaf coffee and styrofoam cups yep. and donuts. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah. And it's routine. Humans love routine. And if you can routinely feel some sort of love in community, in a building that is based off of this dogma on a weekly basis, it can start to feel kind of like you found the secret and it is true. The secret, yeah. When in reality, the truth. When in reality the truth. it might just be that you don't have that same community and love in your life and you found it somewhere else and it doesn't make it any more true besides the fact that you feel good there. Yeah. When you walk into a church, there's a lot of vulnerability there. Yeah. But it's skewed vulnerability, okay? There's a lot of gender inequality. There's a lot of... Social inequalities, there's the ways churches are structured are just like top to bottom. It's, you know, you have the pastor and then everything falls underneath for the most part. So you have these leaders that are normally men, 99.99% men mm. that are coming to you to provide guidance or emotional support. Um, a lot of people in a rut walk into a church. You're really emotionally anxiety and depression. That's what we talk about a lot on this cast. You walk in and if you had a really, really soft, sweet, burly man come up to you and be like crying with you, like... It just must be so hard. And let me just pray for you right now, Lord. I just come before you. And you'd be like, this is powerful shit, man. Yeah. Like vulnerability is healing. Conversations mm -hmm. are healing. Being Putting it out on the table and just letting it all out and feeling that guilt and being honest about it and feeling it and feeling supported and loved by so many around you. Yeah. And they're like, hey, come back on a Wednesday night mm. and let's... Let's do this again. Yeah. You're like, You're like why do you care I've for me? I've never felt yeah. so light. Like, yeah. I, there's something here. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a lot of versions of that church feeling in many different ways. Um, religion just gets that, like, corporate level, like, and here you go, Walmart, free of church. Come on in. We got shoes. It's like Christianity is like, welcome to church. We got everything you need here. Drug addiction. Depression, anxiety, the same medicine for everything, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't go into a hospital with a brain aneurysm and ask for something that would give you like less pain in your feet. Yeah. But in the church, it's kind of one way or the highway. Yeah. So it's dangerous. Yeah. But it works. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability and healing and conversation. Geophagus says, Geophagus, also agnostic atheist, says social pressure, trauma, anxiety, which is kind of what I just said. Mm -hmm. There are lots of excuses, just never reason or logic. Mm -hmm. Powerful, simple statement there, which is very true. And Social just, pressures. And just going back to the post is how could someone, an intellectual, an intellectual 30-year-old get lost into the church and, and believe it? It's, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think it is the things we're talking about where it's, everyone's life's different. Everyone else has their own struggles. And when you feel that connection and that love and that community, uh, you might 
that might make you think you're feeling the spirit. I think it's social. We're social creatures. We all think that we're individuals. We're not. Mm -hmm. We are. But I mean, like we're individuals surrounded by eight to nine billion other individuals. Mm -hmm. We're just versions of each other, literally. Um, And so uh, to think that we go through this life purely alone is a falsehood. And so when you surround yourself around other people, you start to see social norms. You start to catch on to how like people start to do the same things as one another and they track to one another and they listen to one another and they encourage one another and they respond to one another because we're social interactive creatures. And so I like to take the side of the camp that's like, how does an intelligent person with logic end up a born again evangelical Christian who might lose the, like leave their significant other or lose friends because of it you know uh is uh i would think there's like a lot of different reasons but that when when you put yourself into social interactions with a group of people you start to no matter how smart you are you can do things with the crowd you can do things a part of that group that everyone's doing together because we all work together we all respond to one another and there's a lot of phenomenons that show that. Like I was just talking to Megan, my fiance, about how with suicide, and this is kind of like left field out of whatever, but like suicide rates tend to go up in higher numbers in areas like there'll be more suicides and then there'll be less, a lot less suicides and there's more suicides because it's like if a famous person commits suicide, then all these, like a lot of other people that aren't famous that see that on TV or whatever, there's like copycats. Mm-hmm. There's a serial killer that does a crazy shooting I know there's all these little other serial killer or like um like shootings or school shootings that happen, right? Like copycats. Because we're social creatures. Because we're kind of going through similar things as one another. And so when 100 people in a church all kind of together are like, we are all going through the same things together. Yeah. And we found the truth together. And you outlier will find the truth too. Everybody gather around him. Yeah. And hold and yeah. squeeze and breathe. <laughs> when you're like, mm, I'll see you next Wednesday. Yeah. It's pretty, I actually think it's quite easy for a highly intelligent person to find themselves walking into the evangelical Christian faith. I w- if they've never had any religious experience growing up. Yeah. I mean, we're just watching in our country now. It's just on every level. There's just a split down the middle, split down the middle, split down the middle. Black and white, black and white, black and white. One way or the highway. There's no in between. There's no balance. Now that's an aggressive statement. There's, we're improving little bits here and there. Woo! How about that? How about that, dude? Um, that wraps up a moment to Reddit. That was fun. That was fun. Um, all right. So why don't we go over to the Game Cam. Game Cam. Game Cam. Here on the Moral Combat Podcast, we play, as of right now, Mario Kart 64 for a long time. <laughs> and, you know, what's funny is the more we played it, the more I've wanted to keep playing it. Oh, yeah. No, so, boy, this is our childhood. And uh, here on the cast of Moral Combat, we believe in connecting with your inner child. And so as Zach and I started this podcast, one of the things we've always done is play a game at the end of our conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to play board games. Mm-hmm. We played Moncala. We played poker. We played chess. We played checkers. We played all the things you can imagine. Um, and then we bridged into N64. And so here we are playing our original childhood loved game, Mario Kart. And this will be... Uh, Skyscraper 4.0. Skyscraper 4.0. Who won the last time? You're right. You did. I did. But I won the time for that. Here we go. Oh boy. Already going. If you're wondering Already what that music is in the background going. that clicked on, that's from uh, yours truly. I'm out of here, baby. Gotta go. Oh! Nice. Nice. Coming in hot today, boys. Oh, my boys. God. I can't believe you actually hit that. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Hey, thanks, man. 
Okay, and we're getting silent. Anyways, yeah, that music in the background is from yours truly, Nene from the Bay. I produce lots of music, um, even though I'm getting into acting. It's, uh, you know, what I used to do. So that's some gr- Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh snap! That was so freaking close. You can tell the times we play where one person's Ah, like, "Screw it, I want to (laughs) win." Oh snap! That was so. So you were so (laughs) out of control right now. I'm just running from you this whole game. Chill, bro. Oh my god, Star City. This is miserable. (laughs) Oh, dude. (laughs) Woo! Oh, stay away from me. (sighs) <sighs> having fun dude <sighs> no it's just stressful oh so many red shells I'm just like I'm a little bit flabbergasted right now no stop with the stars dude take a banana <laughs> <laughs> yes baby that was crazy coming in hot tonight boys. that was so hard that was tough that was hard. really hard oh, I like how it shows our scores from last time it's just our yeah, cause we never, I guess we didn't turn it off or just saved it that was hard alright Best out of three. <laughs> Here we go again. That's fun. Oh! <laughs> okay, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of here. I got to be really smart. Dude, what is... Get out of here. You're such a Wolverine. <laughs> so scary. What's the point? Dude, I'm coming for you is what this is. Oh! Dude, I oh, sacrificed yes! myself to just yes! smash you. Oh, yes. Come on. Right here. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Nah, dude, not gonna happen. It's just not gonna yeah, happen. Yes, you're gonna, you're it's gonna, gonna right, right. Now I missed it. Ooh. No, dude. Not good, not good. I'm out. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, uh-uh. snap. No, dude. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Get smashed, baby. Oh, man. I feel bad. I felt like I was trying to kill you that game. Sorry. That was fun. That was so fun. <laughs> you know, the last two game cams have been the longest yet, and that one might have been one of the quickest yet. Uh, that was a lot of fun, that actually. That was so much fun. Do you, you remind me of, like, Anakin from, like, one of the first Star Wars. I just, uh, I had a really good time yeah. right now on the game cam. It was fast. It was it's fast. fast. But, I mean, it's, it's important to have fun. Yeah. You had fun. I had fun. <laughs> you had fun. <laughs> Dude, that was so <laughs> brutal. That was insane. <laughs> I don't know what was in my head today, but I was just wanting to kill you. That was so well played. (laughs) I I literally just ran from you. I literally didn't feel like I could play the game at all. That whole game. (laughs) I love it. It was just like, run, run, (laughs) run. 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 Oh, man. Good Good game, game, dude. Echo. Garage on. Too soon. A little early. Too late last time. Too soon this time. Yeah. Oh, that was good. It was good. I think that's uh, Kylie coming on. Let's wrap it up. Yep. Love you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week here on the Moral Combat Podcast. Over and out. When your morals are in debate and you just can't get them straight, walk down the river where you'll find some combat A and you get yourself a scissor and you get yourself some slizzers. When you're dancing on the moon, you might get someone else in Hillard and you go down.